Good morning. So I want to talk about on this video about the effects of pornography on society today and on our self-worth and on our relationships in general. Um, I've been wanting to make this video for a while and I sat down this morning and I wrote out some points. So the act of sex or lovemaking is a sacred unity between two souls and the place from which um, life is created. It is a bonding between two people that love each other and that are committed to each other and that are um, emotionally connected to each other because it is a place of such vulnerability. Um, vulnerability also uh, by ways of physical because you are being the most vulnerable. You are being the most uh, open and um, accessible, but also spiritually. You know, that is a place that if you don't have complete acceptance from your partner in that place, it can be detrimental to your, to your own feeling of self-worth and, and who you are. So there's a few things that I wrote down about pornography and how they affect us as a as a whole and also individually and also in our relationships with our partners so um, pornography is uh, it it creates an expectancy you know when they create pornography they create it for a specific use and they bring in people that are especially uh, attractive with uh, you know not always, right? But you know you, that that have big boobs, or that are you know have uh, 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 large genitals, and that they can last for you know they they keep on going for for an hour. And you and and a lot of times it's even fake. You know they they they're either medicated or or they're taking the in different shots. And there's always a leg here and a leg there, and it's always set up for convenience of the camera, for convenience of the shot. And love and companionship are completely taken out of the, of the equation. It is for the sale. It is for the money. It's taking the most sacred thing and cheapening it, making it, making it super cheap and... Uh, and unrealistically, and, and creating expectations that are unrealistic. Um, you can always tell, or I can always tell, and, and I imagine that other women can um, connect to what I'm saying, that you can always tell when a man learned his sexuality f from, uh, from pornography, or when he learned it from the sensual, because it's, uh, uh, ma the act of making love or, or sex is something that is sensual. It's something that is felt. It's something that is a, a connection. It's a soul connection. It's a body connection. It's, it's, it's the consummation of two people that love each other. They, they come and they, and they, uh, it's a reconciliation. It is, um, and a, uh, act of love. I have a phone call, so I'll I'm gonna pause this and come back. So in a way that it creates unrealistic expectations, it also creates insecurities. Um, when, when you watch a lot of porn, you, you're, you're grown into a mindset to think that that is what sex looks like. That is what the act of making love looks like. Um, like I was saying, when when you are with a partner that learned their uh, the act of lovemaking from pornography, it brings the mind into an act that it comes from emotion. It brings the mind into okay, I got to flip it this way, and it's got to be that way, and I have to hold it for this long, and and a leg here, and what's that position that I saw, and and it brings it out of a place of of pure sensation and just moving with the motion and emotion to a place of, that brings the mind into it. And 
sexuality is actually when you are able to, when you, when you, uh, you know, sexuality is the place that we go completely out of mind and out of control. And that's why it is a place where we're the most vulnerable. And when you, when you, um, climax to, uh, an orgasm that is the point in time in this existence, in this human existence, that you are the most out of your mind and the most in complete uh, vulnerable state at that you're out of body and mind. And so everything in the act of lovemaking is building up towards that climax, which at that climax is the actual creation of life. It is when the, the for the male it is when the seed is is given it's when he gives over his power his his uh creative uh ability to make children his offspring and um it is sacred it is life creating and the uh, 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 putting it into pornography is cheapening the whole thing and when we watch pornography, um, it, cre- it creates both insecurities in women and in men because the women feel like they're expected to look like um, a doll model. And any of us women who've already had children know that the body changes and that it, you know, as we, as we grow older, it changes, but we're still sexual creatures and we're still... Um, sex is a part of, is, is a, is an important, one of the most important parts of our being. It is the place in which we, um, consummate and connect and recon and reconciliate, ring, recon, reconcile, reconciliate with our partners. Um, it is a place of pure love. It's a place of pure acceptance. It's a place of being able to express your love towards somebody else. Um, and, and all of the idea of pornography it cheapens it into something that makes it, devalues it. And uh, also with men, you know, men feel like they're expected to have this, uh, I don't know, uh, 50 inch penis that and and last for hours while they flip their partners up in the air and around and spiraling and it's um, also for a man it can be um, unrealistic and unsensual and create pressure in a place where it, it is exactly the opposite of, of that. It is a place where you let off pressure. It's a place that you feel loved and you feel intimacy and you feel um, um, accepted and you feel um, sensual and sexual and and all of that, all of the good, all of the good and that is in the relationship. It's a place that brings two people closer together. It's not a place where you need to think of, okay, am I doing this right? Am I, uh, or am I going to be accepted? Is she going to think this about me? Or, you know, it's a place. It, it's th- that is defying the the actual act. So, I'm going to go over and see what else I want to talk about here. I'm glad I made a list. Okay, so it puts the mind into something that is sensual. It creates insecurities for both men and women. It creates an expectation that is not real. It cheapens the sacred act of lovemaking, both for men and women. Okay, it is easy. It is easily accessible and takes the magic out of it. So if you are in a relationship and you're going over a, a rough patch, you know, just, just, and I'm not saying to use sex as a tool to achieve what you want in a relationship, but when, when, let's say 200 years ago, before there was TV and before there was any pornography, then, you know, sex, sex is a natural part of your life and something that 
you enjoy with your partner. And if you're going through something with your partner, a, a um, rough patch, then you are kind of, when, when you start feeling the emotions of wanting uh, physical contact or sex, specifically, not physical contact, but separate physical contact from sex, um, which I do think that it should be separated. I think that in nowadays that a lot of people, the only way that they can get intimacy is through sex and, and, and touch. And touch is something that as humans, uh, biologically, we need. Uh, this was proven with babies, that babies need touch in order to survive. Uh, it is, touch is something that should be completely disconnected from sex. So when we have a partner, you know, just just uh, touching the partner without any kind of incentive of, you know, I want sex from you is important. Uh, what happens today is that uh, many men and women are both deprived of physical touch and physical bond. And so in order to achieve, you know, to get that physical bond, they think that they need to have sex or women, you know, when I'm speaking from a place of a woman that wants the physical touch doesn't always necessarily want to have sex. And a lot of times if a man will come and just start touching, it's, it triggers, okay, wait, he wants sex. So then you put completely, you, you quit touching each other in a, in a relationship and then you're both in lack of that physical bond and that's what creates strain on relationships and can make you start looking outward, makes you unhappy in your relationship and makes you, you know, start maybe, maybe looking uh, in other places to create that bond or makes women a completely you know, if their man comes and touches them, then they, they're like, okay, the, the touch shouldn't have to be connected always to sexuality. Um, there should be in, in a loving, healthy relationship, there should be contact, uh, touch contact that is not connected to sex. Um, just loving, loving touch. Um, so, it is easy access, easily accessible and takes the magic out of it. So if 200 years ago, in order to achieve, you know, in order to get to a place of makeup sex or, or having sex, we needed to reconcile, we needed to make up with our partner. So if we were going through a rough patch, then uh, sex also added in a place where we had to make up, we had to uh, go through whatever it was that we were going through with our partner in order to achieve it. And so it was kind of like an incentive. Um, it was uh, something that uh, was more healthy in a relationship. And nowadays, with porno being so accessible uh, many and, and addictive, many times men can't even get excited about sex with a regular with a, their regular uh, partner anymore because because that pornography is so accessible and easy to get to um, that you don't even need to reconcile, you know, to, to make up with your partner. Okay, so you go and you turn on the computer and you get a quick fix. And it's sometimes it's even easier and quicker and funner than with your partner because with your partner, you have to kind of, you have to satisfy them. And with pornography, you can look up, you know, you can go through hundreds of movies and choose the one of your liking and and your the the person that you're viewing is hot and you can get it and and it is it is in tune to get you excited and um and they know exactly what to put and you get to see all of the gory and so it's a cheap fix it's a very cheap fix that allows you to not um have to to go through the motions and the emotions uh, and, the, and the emotional maturity of, um, of partnership. And so it takes away our emotional maturity as well when we watch a lot of porn and get hooked on porn. Um, let's see what else. Okay, so you don't have to reconcile with your partner, and I already talked about that. 
It can make your partner feel insecure and unattractive. So if you are with a partner and you're constantly going back to porn, pornography, and, and pornography is addictive. It is a cheap, easy uh, fix. It's, it's addictive and just as alcohol is addictive, just as drugs is addictive, just as behaviors are addictive, just as lashing out is addictive. Uh, pornography is addictive. It's a quick fix. You go straight into a, a you can run away to pornography. Um, you don't have to deal with things when you, when you have pornography, you don't have to deal with a partner. You don't have to deal with, um, and it also is a, a quick release from pressure. If you have pressure, it's a release. It's a quick, okay, I'm releasing my pressure. I'm not having to deal with my pressure. I'm going to release it. And it can make your partner feel insecure if you are living with a partner or you have a, 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 a life partner <clears throat> or a girlfriend or a boyfriend and you're constantly going back to the pornography, it can make your partner feel like they are unattractive or like you're not excited sexually about them. And it can really um, put a strain on their own security and their, and their self-worth. If they feel like in a place that is so holy, the holy of holies, they are unattractive to you and you're their partner. And the only way that, you know, and that you're more attractive to these, attracted to these women on the screen or they have flaws or their boobs aren't standing up just like the woman that they specifically chose because her boobs are standing up. I mean, it's, it's, it's completely out of uh, whack with nature. Women's boobs don't always see, you know, there's all different shapes and sizes, just like there are for uh, men's um, penises. So it, it, and it also, it also has an effect on men's uh, stamina and men's uh, security because uh, you can see young, young teenagers already with rulers uh, checking out the size of their penis. If their penis is large or not large and all the things that, you know, you, you can see it in the generations. So it creates these insecurities in both partners. Um, and okay, so the poses are meant for the camera and make conventional, like conventional lovemaking seem boring. So when you're watching porn, there's like a leg here and this person flipped over that way and flipped over that way. But really when, when you look at it, it's set up so the camera can get, uh, like a view of what it needs to get a view of. And it's not a natural way of sensual lovemaking. When there's sensual, it comes from it, it, it comes from a place of feeling of what do I feel like. And sometimes the best feeling is when you just kind of merge together and, and in that merging, there is no good camera view. So so the 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 uh, pornography teaches you altered um, unnatural sometimes ways of sex. And also it, it like takes it to the extreme. So it shows you all sorts of, uh, um, acts that a lot of women and a lot of men don't feel, you know, maybe it's some kind of weird off fantasy, but it's not of the mainstream norm, uh, you know, lovemaking is for uh, uh, creating life. It creates life. So when you think of it in that way, and it's sacred, it has been this way for thousands and thousands of years, and it's just like the plastic generation. For thousands and thousands of years, we uh, humans have lived and really left barely any kind of footprint. Any kind of footprint that they left on the earth was of stone houses because everything was made of the elements. And now with science, we're creating plastic. And just in the last hundred years, you see that in you, everywhere you go, even in nature, there's plastic everywhere. There's pl and that's just in the last hundred years. And and it's like society has been shifting in these last hundred years so quickly that we're not catching up with it and we uh, um, now we're starting to go wanting to go back this generation now going into the new world 
we're wanting to go back into the nomadic ways of living back into the nature because we've come so far disconnected from our nature that our lives are in a buzz. We're running around constantly around means and making money just so we can live, just so we can live making money. And it, it kind of creates this buzz that we're in such a fast world that the world is getting faster and faster and faster. And pornography is part of that evolution. Pornography has also come out of whack with the nature, with the natural uh, meaning of the sacredness of the act of making love. They put two people that have never met before, have no spiritual connection, no love connection, and they put cameras there and people are you know, doing the act of creating life for money in front of a camera. And we're sitting there watching it. And it is creating all sorts of complications in our minds, especially since it's so accessible um, to young people, to children that aren't, aren't uh, mature enough in their minds to even conceive of what the idea is. They are already learning their sexuality and, and thinking that, that this is what um, sex is or 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 what the act of love making is and this is what it looks like and that is where they're getting their sex education you, then you go to school and you get sex education and it's all about don't get pregnant take the pill uh this is what the male genitalia looks like this is what the female genitalia looks like this goes in here it's all very mechanical and and they don't teach about the what it does to your soul and how you feel and and that it's an act of pure love and it's a connect and connection between two people and i feel like we're getting so far away from our source also in this area there's so many areas but also in this area and it's time to bring it back it's time i feel like the new generation feels so far disconnected that and their worlds are shaking and that they are looking for the nomadic way to come back into nature, to come back into source, to come back into the natural way of being. And, and there, there needs to be more education on this. There needs to be more people speaking uh, uh, from a place of um, just keeping it real. And talking about it in in a way openly, in a way that it really um, shows a different side to it, the spiritual side to it, the 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 love side to it, the the what it really does, and it's detrimental to your being, to how you feel, how you feel about yourself. Um, okay, so. The poses are meant for camera and make conventional lovemaking seem boring. It is easily accessible for young minds that have not yet matured into a place of relationship because mature, immature minds are still not even ready for a, a man and female relationship. You're, when you mature into that place, it's like you mature, it, you mature into a place of being a parent. You mature into a place of recreating life. And teenagers, young teenagers, and even before teenagers, you know, seven, eight, nine-year-olds already have access to pornography and think that that is what the act of lovemaking looks like. So I, I just want to bring this home again, that it is, it is twisting the minds, this easy access to porn and lack of education of what, what it really is, is uh, twisting the minds of our young people and, and, and um, like brainwashing them, conditioning them into a belief at such a young age that later on in life will be very, very hard to, to break. It's like an addiction. It's like an addictive way of thinking. It's like a glass roof. It's like people that were raised in poverty mindset remain in poverty mindset typically for the rest of their lives unless something happens that breaks that, uh, that, that train of thought or breaks that glass ceiling. And, and I'm just talking about poverty because it's something that I'm working on in myself, but there are so many glass ceilings. There's so many ways of thinking that people have that 
um, that really uh, um, diminish their life, their life uh, experience, bring their life experience narrower than than what it should be or what it could be. It inhibits their life into a very narrow uh, preset um, way of being. And this is what porn does in our sexuality. It's it like twists up your sexuality into something that is unnatural. Okay, it disconnects. Okay, and also to be sexually mature, you need to be mature to be in a relationship. And so in, in our children, uh, you know, instead of keeping sex as something that is, um, tamim, there's a word tamim, it's like innocence. It's like we're taking away our children's innocence and allowing them to, to see also, it's not only sexuality, it's, it's all of what they watch on TV nowadays, all of the, and, uh, sexuality and, uh, guns and running people over and and um, war and um, all of these things that their minds are not yet mature enough to wrap around and to make any kind of sense of because they haven't had the life experience yet to do that i just looked at the thing it was 22 22 um then it is it is uh, conditioning them to think of something that is not of the norm, that is of the extreme. Because on TV nowadays, you know, you see movies that they made a uh, hundred years ago when they first started coming out with TV, and everything was so innocent, and everything was more like realistic, and more. And nowadays, just to get you excited about something, and I'm not only talking about the pornography, but also like the movies, it has to be full blown extreme. Uh, uh, explosions and and things going on that in by nature and in nature aren't uh, plausible. They don't really happen. The the hero of the movie isn't completely, you know, the he real life heroes um, aren't completely uh, uh, invincible. You know, they have these heroes and and they're teaching our children and the young minds that this is the norm because they're watching it over and over and over and it's programming their mind and also with the shoot 'em up bang bang games that they're playing where they run people over and you know, it's just the same it's it, that's the same it's what's causing shootings in schools and things like that are unhealthy minds that are that are um also with with nowadays the speed that everything is there's children that don't that are deprived of of uh, warm and loving and um, upbringing. Their parents simply don't have time because they're off running around trying to make a living. Both the woman and the, the man are off trying to make a living. They get home at late, late. They don't have patience or time for their children. They just let their children raise themselves on TV. So people are, are also getting not enough attention, not enough guidance, uh, not enough touch, not enough emotion. They don't know what to do with their emotions because you go to school and it's very emotionless. You're only training the brain, putting knowledge into your brain, knowledge into your brain, knowledge into your brain, um, but not teaching you about your emotions and what they are there to tell you or how to express your emotions. It's exactly the opposite. You're taught not, don't cry don't uh, express your emotions. You're being weak. Um, uh, you're not supposed to feel that way. You're supposed to feel this way. Um, if you're hurt, then go deal with it. And you're not really taught how to process your emotions uh, properly or what your emotions are there to tell you or even guidance through your emotions. You know, there's a lot of emotions that we feel like jealousy and, and you know, that are, that are human nature. And we're not guided to show us what that is. That 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 I did a video on jealousy that I would I would uh, recommend watching. I did a couple of videos on jealousy actually that I would recommend on watching because jealousy is a pass through emotion, and it's a false emotion. Um, so I would suggest that if you do have a tendency for feeling jealousy, to watch those videos look them up and watch them. It kind of explains it. And at least at having an explanation of it, you can start doing the self work. 
Okay, so it disconnects it from love. It disconnects sex from love. Pornography dis disconnects sex from love. Uh, where um, sex in its nature is an act of love. I know that it can be disconnected from love and it always it doesn't always have to mean love. Um, it, it's also a release, but, but the act of it is typically, you know, by source, by nature, from two people that are committed to each other and love each other. I have written here, sex is something beautiful, the coming together of two souls, sacred unity from which life is created. Um, it's from a place of where two people love each other and are um, connected to each other. It is a way for them to express that love to one another and build each other up. And uh, pornography takes away that magic. It takes away that uh, connection between two people. It gives you an easy out so that you, you know, you can go and get, get, you can go and watch pornography and masturbate and then you don't even need your partner. So your partner is left with whatever, whatever, you know, if you guys are fighting or if you have something that you haven't worked out, then it just leaves them to dwell on it and it leaves you to dwell on it as well. And it breaks up that family unity. It breaks up that connection, that bond that we need. Um, as humans, it is something that is, is sacred and something that we need just in our existence to feel whole is a bond. Um, so I think I, I went over pretty much everything that I wrote down. And so just to like sum it up that um, so that the point of this video is what the effects of pornography have on our sexual behavior and on our security and um, how it can create insecurities in us and um, the importance of knowing this and the importance of uh, love making in a relationship. So I appreciate you watching and um, I'd be happy if you comment and tell me your thoughts on the subject. And um, just remember that love making is some, an, a sacred act between two people that love each other and are connected and expression of that. And when, it, when it's done through the place of sensuality, it's like, it's like liquid, velvety chocolate. It's the most sweetest of the sweets. It's like, Okay, I'll leave you with that.